So Man, I, just had a, I, I, I just had a quick question, and then after this, I'll, I'll drop because I actually do have to do something. But I, I'm curious, like, so so you said that lying is not an absolute sin. So, right. okay, so what if I do something, or what if I cause you to lie to somebody else to hurt them? Is that a sin? If you cause me to lie, then... Yeah, um, yeah, yeah like, okay, like, yeah, for instance... Like, yeah, give, me a, give me an example so I I'm, know what you're trying to say. Okay, yeah, okay, okay, no, no problem. What if I say, um, what if I don't like somebody, right? Mm -hmm. And I say, um, and I tell you, um, God forbid, you know, so But if I tell you to, let's say, okay, perfect example. Let's say you're a mechanic, okay? You work on cars. I know you, and... There's a guy that I don't like, and he's coming to get work done on, on, on his car. You're the mechanic, so you're going to do work on his car, okay? And I tell you to lie to him about his brakes being fixed, tell him that his brakes are good, but in actuality, they are not. So that when he drives and he thinks his brakes are good, he ends up getting unalived. Is that wrong? Is that a bad lie by implication? Yes, we, we can't lie in that scenario. Now, the only exception to that would be is if, uh, let's say he didn't test the brakes and stuff and he believed you did and you tell him and he believed what you were saying was truthful and he, and he said it, then he's not responsible because he didn't know. But other than that, if he knew about it, that it is actual lie and he lied, then it's a lie, yeah. Okay, so what if I told you I have a sahih? narration of your prophet doing something similar where he's implicated on something that gets somebody unalived you can show me the hadith but this is this would be uh in some aspects fallacy or false equivalency because in islam um all the rules and laws uh don't apply to the prophet that apply to the people but i have to see what you're trying to say though <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, like I'll give you an example. The major hold on, one. Wait, that everyone hold, knows. hold on, wait, hold on, wait, hold on, wait, hold on, wait. Wasim, so, so you believe that Muhammad is ma'asum? You believe he's infallible? Yeah, he, we, 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 we believe that he's sinless. He's protected by God completely from sin, but he has a human nature. So oh. in that in that regard, mm -hmm. I want you to understand the whole thing. He can make mistakes, like he can forget, or like well, one then time. Well, he's not ma'asum. He's not perfect then. He's not infallible. Uh, in in that regard, yes. For us, he's a perfect example. There's only one regard, bro. What are you talking no, about? No, 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 no. He's the perfect example for us to how to how to live our life. Okay, that okay. Way he would say he's perfect. Okay, he's, so let me just show you the hadith. Not God, see? Let me just so, show you the okay, no problem, so, bro. Yeah, let but, me just show you the hadith. Mm -hmm. Okay, because only God is infallible. That's the point. But let me just show you the hadith. And I want you to tell me because the reason why I went through that whole example before was because I knew that you were going to say that, bro. We have to get, this is sad that we have to do this, bro. We have no, to get you to I, see... I, hold on, just relax, bro. We have to get screen? you to see... I, I, I have responses. Just relax. Don't, don't worry. Just relax, don't, don't bro. Don't think you're going to catch me just, or something. I'm not, it's not even a gotcha moment. Okay. Not really. Okay. But, I, I, bro, I have to get you guys to see the logic in what you all are saying just so you can see how hypocritical you are when we start talking about Muhammad. Um... I mean, you want can the I big screen? I mean, whatever yeah. you say is hypocritical doesn't even mean it's hypocritical to us. See what I'm saying? Okay. And we, I mean, and we, 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 under, we understand that. Reason. We understand that wholeheartedly, Wasim. We have, yeah. we have, we have comprehension skills, bro. We get that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And after I, I show this, and then I'll, I'll probably wrap with you some more a little bit, Wasim, for a little bit, and then I really do have to go. But uh, this is uh, this is Sahih Muslim, 1801, and mm -hmm. there's other narrations that talk about this as well. But uh, if I go to the top, and it's very long, so you can read it on your own, but it's really the first part that's relevant. It has been narrated on the authority of Jabir that uh, the Messenger of Allah said, Who will unalive Ka'ab bin al Arsh? Oh, I'm sorry, Ka'ab bin al Ashrif. I'm sorry. He has maligned Allah, the exalted, and his messenger. Uh, to malign somebody means to talk bad about them, basically. Um, he has maligned. Uh, uh, the messenger of Allah, and he is, he is maligned Allah and his messenger. Um, and then he says, do you wish that I should unalive him? Right? He said, yes. He said, so then the guy that's going to be doing the unaliving, he's basically saying, um, he asks, 
permit me to talk to him in a way that I deem fit, right? He said, talk as you like. Now, there's another narration of this exact same hadith, right? So he's basically telling you to lie. And I want to pull that up. Oh, here it is right here. So it's the same narration. Um, it's just a different hadith number. Uh, Sahih Bukhari, 4037. Now pay attention to this because this one is a, is, is a lot more detailed. Okay, it's the same. It's the exact same story, bro. Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah. Uh, Allah's messenger said, who is willing to, to unalive Kaab bin Al-Ashrif, Al that, that name, bro, who has hurt Allah and his apostle. We understand that the hurt here is to malign. We just read it, right? Therefore, Muhammad bin Maslama got up saying, uh, oh, Allah's messenger, would you like that I unalive him? The prophet said, yes. Muhammad bin Maslama said, then allow me to say a false thing, i.e. to deceive Kaab. The prophet said, you may say it. So when you read this whole hadith, it's very long. Um, but basically, he's getting ready. He's doing all of what he can do. He's basically going over his story of how he's going to unalive this guy mm -hmm. for maligning Allah and stuff like that. Yeah, so do you know the way you link the first one to this one? We I have to see if that's a proper linkage or not. So, so, we, so we can do that in some sometimes with some. Hold on, wait, hold, hold on, wait, hold on, wait. So, so the situation is not similar, bro. It's just a different hadith. It's the same guy. Yeah, but we, uh, we have to. I have to see the context and stuff and see if if this if the what you were saying in the first time if that truly applies to this one or not. Bro, what are you talking about? It's literally the exact same guy. It's the ex okay. Look. Just, just because I don't have a lot of Because I'm not reading the whole thing, too, so I don't oh, know. Oh, I don't okay, know what that's, that's fine. I'm, I'm that's assuming what, what you're saying is correct. That's another yeah, thing. It's, it's fine, bro. Don't even worry about it. So <laughs> then it goes to the end. Mm -hmm. He basically, this guy, I'll start from here. Mm -hmm. He says, um, I got the best uh, Arab women who know how to use the high-class perfume. So he's basically used perfume to trick this guy, uh, Kaab. Muhammad bin Maslama requested Kaab. Will you allow me to smell your head? That's why I said you got to read the whole hadith, but mm -hmm. these are just the most relevant parts, okay? okay? So Kaab said, hold on, wait, just, just let me finish. Kaab mm -hmm. said, yes, Muhammad smelt it and made his companion smell it as well. Then he requested Kaab again, will you let me smell your head? Kaab said, yes, when Muhammad got a strong hold of him, he said, this is uh, Muhammad bin Maslama, not Muhammad uh, and Nabi, right? He said to his companions, get at him. So they unalived him and went to the prophet and informed him, okay? Mm -hmm. So they used this deceptive way to get this guy, uh, Kaab, to come mm -hmm. to him by tricking him with perfume, mm -hmm. and then they unalived him. I now, got a perfect response for you. Yeah, do you okay. know what Kaab When you want to hear it? Okay, okay. Now, the, you know the, the reason why I brought it up, the reason why I brought it up is because Muhammad is guilty by implication, by association. He's allowing people to lie deceptively so that they can be unalived. You told me before I read this hadith that this is a no-no, right? So you know, that, what's going that, on here? It's a fallacy of false equivalency again. That example you gave doesn't fit this example. Why that, not? The, the mechanic example you don't because the rules, the 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 the, the laws are different in the time when um, when uh, someone is trying to hurt you, like in war and stuff. You can do certain things that normally you can't do. So. Hold on, bro. I, I, so, hold on, wait, 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 wait. You know wait. how it says hurting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Hold on, wait, hold on, wait, hold on, wait. He did it deceptively. You know what he did? It yeah, says he did it deceptively, bro. Would no, you allow no, me to say it, something? Yeah. Because uh, in, 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 in war, there can be deception. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay, hold on a second, hold on a second. So let's use that logic. Hold you on a second. Guys, uh, you guys try to do it all the time, number one. Ibadu, Ibadu ar rahman Just relax a second, bro, okay? Yeah. The reason why this doesn't apply is because in a war, you can just go after them. Especially Muhammad, if he has such a strong army, it's it one guy. Uh, hold okay. on, hold on, Wasim, just relax, bro. It's one guy, one guy. So you mean to tell me that Muhammad, in all of his might, had to deceptively get somebody to trick this guy so that he could unalive him? 
when he had a whole army, going, if, 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 if what you're saying is true, if what you're saying is true, you're trying to kill my prophet, man. He got taken out. That's how that, that's what happened. <laughs> what is he did, bro? Uh, hold on, wait, no, hold on a second. No, 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 no. He, he hurt should him think by, twice before second, doing bro, something bro, like that. Bro, hold on, he didn't dude, even try Allah, to hold on, hold on, he didn't like get a sword or something or. No, oh, you don't know you're implying all that. You have oh, to know. No, it, sa it says it right here. Who has hurt a lot? Calm down, y'all. Y'all, you, you, you starting to panic. Oh, right. Who, who has hurt a lot? Panic, man. And I'm to give him facts. Bro, just relax. Who has hurt a lot and his apostle? The other guy said that he maligned him. Now, the reason why we know it's not with some kind of weapon or something like that is because can you use a weapon to hurt a law? No, so when it, when it, we so that. Lie, bro. So can that, you use a weapon to hurt? You can't Allah? hurt Allah at all. So that's not what that means. That means can you yeah, yeah, yeah. use a weapon, no. a physical weapon, to hurt Allah? That's, what he doesn't, it doesn't that's not what that means. So what that means is when you hurt the prophets, when you hurt the prophet sallam, then Allah swt gets mad. That that's what that means. It doesn't mean okay. you can hurt Allah. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So let me get this straight. So again, so, you guys don't know the meanings, so, the proper so, meanings. So so I, I mean, I can literally prove to you, bro. Like that is is not. I mean, but I, I I'm not I'm not gonna go into that because it's not necessary. Of course you're not because you have no response. That's that's why. No, not, yeah, like bro, I, so. Guys, okay, guys, okay, bro, okay, bro. Okay, bro. So like so why don't you explain you. this to me, right? So when it says Yakulu kala Rasulullahi sallallahu alaihi wasallam min min kaab bin al ashraf, right? Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Sorry about Be quiet, bro. Sometimes you gotta get it together. Avi. Sometimes you gotta get it together, man. Gotta get right? my screen. Wa right? Rasool looking a little blurry. Wa this that. word, this word, hold on, just relax. My bro brother, read it right, please, man. This, this, okay, okay, read it for me. No, read. I'm not, I don't, I don't mean it that way, me. but I'm just saying. Just, read just, it for me. Just read the English part then, because not read, everyone read, understands No, that. because because you said it doesn't mean bro, that. What's the, what's the hadith, bro? I, I, I can literally go into Al Ma'ani right now. And I can literally type no, this that's, word that, in. That, that's not the proper way just, to say Bro, you just relax. You're asking me to prove something to you, and I'm proving it to you. Bro, no, no, you're relax. not. Because if you look at what you You're asking me to prove, to prove something to you, and I'm life? giving you the reason why I'm the, saying the, it. Our scholars who actually study that. Hey, why y'all panicking? One at a time, man. Just relax. What that means is what I'm saying. Relax. This word... About to start muting people, bro. So this word... Because he's not letting us talk, man. I, okay, this word can mean one of two things. It can mean in a physical way, and it can also mean to hurt somebody's feelings. We just went to the other hadith that talked about the same guy and what the guy did. He maligned Allah. How do you know it's the same instance? Anyways, you can't you can't you're applying a lot bro, of things you have no clue about, bro, man. What are you it's the about? same guy. No, even if it's the same guy, how do you know it's the, it's, it's the, the same unaliving of Kaab bin oh Al Ash? Man, come on, be it's real. It's the same guy. What are you talking about? Man, this same sorry, guy man. heard Allah and his apostle <laughs> in a particular way, and he's explaining how he did it. He maligned him. So why don't you go ahead and explain to me what it means to malign somebody? That yeah, that's why that's why you know the first of these when you're talking about the maligning thing, that's why over there it doesn't say that he got right, taken out. Hold on a second, bro. Let me go That's why the second you. hadith says he got taken out because that's let me pull what he tried. Let, what he let tried me go ahead and pull it up for you. That's what happened. You tried to hurt my prophet. Prof get taken out. Okay, look. Okay, look. Okay, look. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Facts. Hold on a second. I found something from no, from I found something from Miriam from Miriam Webster's dictionary. To malign. Again, right? you're not understanding what I'm trying to tell you. Evil effect of nature mean. or effect injurious, right? Having okay. showing intense, uh, uh, often ill uh, ill will, maliciousness, right? Gave him a maligned look. Right. right. So how come in that hadith that uses this word that you had to skip to go to the oh, other look, hadith? Here it is right here. As a verb. As a verb. How come in that first to hadith, utter? Okay, it, bro, just mute up, bro. To utter injuriously uh, misleading or false reports about or speak evil. So it is something he said. To malign somebody means... No, no, but that's, that's why in that first hadith, it doesn't talk about him getting... Oh, I'm sorry. Out. I'm sorry, guys. You guys are right. The, the first one is malignant. My bad. See, yeah. you, you don't even say the word right. Yes, this is the word. Oh, bro, this makes it worse for you because it definitely means... It definitely means something that they say. So this... So when he said he maligned him... It means he said something false because how can you hurt a law? Secondly, 
I explained that to you. Secondly, secondly, bro, he didn't saying, even hurt the prophet at all, bro. He was trying. If you're bro. saying, relax, bro. Secondly, if you're saying that if I hurt Muhammad, then I hurt Allah. Who is this Muhammad guy? Why, bro? Like what? This bro, he didn't even hurt the prophet. Muhammad. He was, he was trying. Bro. Him. He got he got taken out before he tried. I, I already know about this hadith, man. He got taken out before. He tried okay, to... if you know about it, then why don't you have any answers for it? Because I mean, I am giving you uh, very logical answers that everyone Matter in the fact. chat can understand, and you're just waffling around. Jeez. Yeah. Okay. Look. Look. Okay. So look, the same thing. That's why you're going up and down and going to one hadith and another. So and allow me to smell the scent on your head. This the same. This the same situation, bro. He said, "Yes, you may smell it." So he caught it and smelt it. Then he said, "Allow me to do it again." Then he held his hand and he said, "His companions, do your job," and they unalived him, bro. So now you have to answer the question: Why does your prophet? Why is your prophet being implicated in something that is sinful, even according to your own admission? No, he the uh, but what did I tell uh, you? He can't sin. So that's that, that's that what you said. Your thing out, anyways. It's not a sin. That's what that's, you said, bro. Yeah. You you so how, you how all you of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, for everybody else, it's a sin. But now for Muhammad, it's not a sin, bro. No, no, no. I I, I was just giving you that as an example. Like for example, the Prophet had more than four wives at one time. Certain things don't apply. I said, I told you that from the beginning. Yes, bro. And I, and I have two dogs. Up, I, yes, bro. I have up, two dogs. And you sometimes could have brought I like up something cats. My friend that, has that a cat. I had a counter my later friend on, has a cat and my other friend has goldfish. What does that have to do with what I'm asking you, bro? This is insane. Uh, oh, my. Because the law, uh, sometimes the, uh, um, the law of God is not exactly the same as for the prophet and his people. All right, bro, I'm done. You that this example. is crazy. I actually have but stuff you can't to understand I'm not going to sit here. Huh? I'm not going to sit here and argue with you guys on this ridiculousness. Uh, life bro, you got it, bro. This before is you go, bro, do you know what Cobb did? Right on, I mean, I appreciate you for stopping by, man. That yeah, was man. insane. Hey, look, man, we got 123 people in here, man. Make sure y'all follow the host. Follow me. Follow the people hey, on you stage almost as had, well, you almost too. Had 20. Make sure y'all follow the host, follow me, follow people on stage as well, man, if y'all enjoying the conversation. Uh, the word, you got something you want to bring up? Nah, man, I'm just smelling the waffles cooking in here right now, bro. Yeah. Like, it's, it's crazy. The waffles it's like Christian right now. Getting, waffles, waffles, getting baked, it's man. Getting baked, man. With all this waffling <laughs> going on, man. Them, them boys then came up with their own uh, criteria of Tassir. They done rolled them. They done, bro. They they didn't got cooked, bro. I'm I'm starting to feel sorry for them, bro. Yeah. <laughs> they build their own waffle house, man. Bro, hey bro. hey, uh, one sec. Can I say something? If anyone wants any evidence of what I'm saying, I can send it to them. Just message me, bro. You don't have no evidence if you making up stuff, bro. You no, can't, uh, you can't have, have a, evidence when you made it all up. On, I do. On, on, it's on not the made up. That's the thing. Hey, see? life. I do. I do want them to. I do want them to have beef, though. Hey, your Go mic is doing to that. The, to the your, to, to, your mic to is the doing that same thing. stuff again. You're a little low. I'm low. Can y'all hear me now? A little bit. A little low. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, man. They, they, I got a little bit. I can't hear you, bro. Am I still low? Yep, a little yep. bit. Speak up, bro. He said, "Hey y'all, if any of y'all want a, a yeah. folder, if y'all want a folder of lies, man, DM me." Can y'all hear me now? Still low, man. Man, I ain't low, bro. Stop it. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, you go you, ahead. You go ahead. Where you got it? We can't hear you. Yeah, um, Sahil Muslim two six five eight. Pull it up. No, pull it up, right man. Now. You be you you just my type of dude, man. I love. Showing you face to face. I, I can't trust you guys. I gotta see it to make sure. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good, baby girl. Hold on. Boom. Let's see what we have here. Sahil Muslim. You see Sahil Muslim two six five eight. We can't see your, your your camera not on. Oh, okay. My bad. I didn't press A. Let me get the big screen for the full folks. Boy, did a lot messenger are saying. All right. The chapter, son of Adam, share of Zena, etc., is decreed for him 
So Zenna, y'all know what Zenna is, it's adultery. It's decreed for him. It says, Abu Huraira reported Allah's messenger as saying, Allah fixed, Allah fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will not indulge in. There would be no escape from it. The adultery of the eyes, the lustful look, and the adultery of the ears is listening to voluptuous song or talk. And the adultery of the tongue is licentious speech. And the adultery of the hand is the lustful grip, embrace. And the adultery of the feet is to walk to the place where he intends to commit adultery. And, hit, and the heart yearns and desires which he may or may not put into effect. Whoa. Okay. So you know you know what this is talking about? Allah fixes the very portion yeah. of adultery for the man to engage in. So in order in order for you to understand this, you have to extend the concept of compatibilism in is uh in Islam. So basically what that right. means yeah, what that means is we have free will but it's not absolute. So basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala controls everything. So all good and bad is controlled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, he has given us the ability to do good and bad and normally he can sometimes but normally or he will sometimes but normally he does not directly interfere. So what that means is God knows if you're going to commit adultery or not. Like if, you know, if you're going to look at something, adultery in, is, is in all types in this example. Well, hello, stop, just stop, 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 stop. <laughs> yeah. Do you so see this? It says, please, please, no please, please stop him from waffling. From it. So there's no option you have. There's no escape from it. There's no escape from what? From okay. what? So uh, no escape from what, no dream. You, what you would do, basically, from that. So mm -hmm. from what? So God knows everything, right? So He has already written it down on uh, uh, on the eternal tablet. So He He has already written down what you're gonna do. He knows it. However, it does it, it doesn't mean He He wrote it down and you did it. It means that you're gonna do it, and He wrote it down, right? So He has given you that choice. So all this means is. Because we're human, because we sin, we're gonna, we we're gonna, we are going to sin to some level in this, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. even in in my religion, even I be if you feeling, look at, I be feeling like he, I be feeling like you can't really read, Wasim. Bro, because because really, look, it says, who fixed it? Allah fixed it. Yeah, Allah it. fixes everything. Allah fixes he all good fixed and bad. It. So if you're gonna be adulterous, Allah fixed the very portion of adultery. Which a man will indulge in. Allah fixed it. So it's no option. He gave us a free no, will that, to that, do this, that, do that. That's what free will is. Allah fixed it. No. no. Free will is something different. Allah no, no, no. fixed it for so, you, brother. Now now so, he's trying to change the definition of free it's not, will. I'm not trying to change it's anything. It's the definition switch. I'm, I'm giving you what it is. If it, So basically, it's compatibilism. So it's in the middle of hard determinism and and pure free will. It's in the middle position where God controls everything, but God gave us the ability to do good and bad. So what this means is whatever whatever we're going to do, we're going to do. That's what that means. That's all that means. It doesn't mean God is going to make us do that. Can you guys hear me? That's what you're trying to imply, but that's... So that's when it says... Uh, in, in, hold on, bro. In, in, ask, him, ask him hold this on, real quick. Man. Ask him this real quick word. Uh, Wasim. If I fix mm -hmm. if I fix the amount of times people can come in and out of my house, does that mean that I control the amount of times people came in and out of my house? But that that's not the proper Answer way. Answer the question. It's used in there. That's Answer not the, the that, question. That, that's not the proper way it's used in there. Answer the question. If I don't see a false equivalency, you're not God. Uh unknown so uh, un unknown Mahdi. Are you a Muslim? Yes, Alhamdulillah. All right. Good goodbye, Wasim. Thanks for coming. Usually, when the Israeli flag is goodbye, Wasim. Thanks for coming, Madi. Go ahead, man. You want to address this hadith? So, the way I see it from this particular hadith is like this is 
a fixed thing by Allah, which your eyes, your ears, everything will witness what you're doing. So meaning that there's no escape from it, that you cannot deny that I did not do this. So every portion of your body will be kind of telling against you that, no, I saw you doing it, or I, I saw, I felt you touching it. That's how I feel the, uh, the whole Hadith is like going out. You want to respond to that word? That answer nothing, bro. It's no. saying that Allah fixed it for you to do this. No, 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 no. There's no, no escape from it, Mari. It says no, in, it a, in, in the Allah, actual hadith, Allah fixed it, says, it for you to do it. There Allah will be no escape from it. way for you to not escape from it. Right. So. Yeah, if you if can't escape from it, it for you, yeah, you, if you can't escape from it, you can't escape from not doing it. It gotta happen. Because Allah fixed it. No, 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 no. You see, oh, the first thing God. you have to know is if you have free will or not. That's the first thing you have to, like, understand whether if there is free will or not. Then, of course, the whole, um, let's talk about the universe. So the whole universe, the way it's designed, everything has to be so perfectly in place for us to be living. So even when it comes to us, whether if it's sinning, whatever it is, it is designed in a way that we cannot escape from it. And how would I understand from whether if I have a free will or not, the first thing that was created in this universe was the pen. So a lot of people say, oh, the pen already wrote everything. I personally believe the pen writes as it goes. So whatever you do, the pen keeps on writing it. So you have a free will. Yeah, some, it, it might go against some people say, well, then, then does Allah know everything or does he not know everything? Then you have to look into the scientific facts of the different dimensions, how we live in a, a 3D, 4D world where we can go with length, width, and height. And of course, time is the fourth dimension. Some scientists say it's about 11 dimensions. Some say it's about 26. The higher the dimension, the more um, capability, whatever that creature will have. But the fifth dimension they're talking about being probability. So probability, if somebody has or lives in the fifth dimension, that means they can see the future. Uh, they can see what will be if somebody takes this option or someone takes that option, so on going into the next probability, I mean, the next dimension, the next dimension. Now, I don't know exactly how many are there, but the highest dimension they consider to be God because only a God that we consider can have so much power. So those are the reasons, like when I look at this Hadith particularly, is that it doesn't say he fixed it for you to make a sin he fixed the way our life or our body is that you cannot escape from lying about the sin man i feel like y'all really think y'all be answering the questions when y'all when y'all when y'all say stuff like that man the verse don't say that i mean you if, if you if you think that that's what it means to you? I mean, look, bro. Um, I mean, want to come back up to if you can. remember oh, a yes. lot of hadith. A lot of hadith mean different things when people read it. They get they catch different vibes from it. So I, when I look at it, that's how I see Amen. it. See, Amen. I I say Allah fixed. The Unknown very Mahdi. Adult. Unknown Mahdi. We yeah. heard your. We, we, we heard your hook, but bro, we don't want no more. We don't want no more sermons. Please, somebody give me the big screen so I can just end this, bro. This is crazy, bro. Like, <laughs> yo. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. Like, uh, real talk, bro. Yeah, go ahead. Finish, uh, finish him off, man. Uh, <laughs> Unknown Mahdi and, and you and your other friend, bro. First name, that boy. <laughs> Middle name, B. <laughs> Last name. <laughs> <Lying>. <laughs>
Bro, this is the same, it's the same situation, bro. Sahih Muslim 2657B. Verily, Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in, in which of in which he of necessity must commit, bro. Wow. What are you saying? What are you saying, bro? It have nothing to do with you choosing if you want to do it or not, bro. What you got wow, going on, wow, bro? Wow. It says you got to do it. Allah has fixed it, which you must commit. Wow. Y'all just be straight up lying, bro. Like, come on, wow, man. Like, this wow. is crazy, bro. Straight it's up. It's over, man. It's over. Madi, how you feel about that? You like that? That's, that's, uh. But, but how is that benefits? Like, for somebody to fix something and then you doing it. And then yet it's haram. Does Allah does Allah okay. want you to commit adultery? Isn't adultery a sin? Yes, it is. Okay, so why is he fixing the amount of adultery people will do? Why is his hand in the amount of adultery people will commit? That's not good. Well, that's, that's the question. Good, so now, so now the, the the question comes whether if this hadith is is actually a proper one or not. Wait, but why were you trying to justify it? Now that it's now that it's problematic, now we gotta see if it's proper or not. You should have tried to figure out if it was proper or not before we you even started trying to justify it. Now that makes you seem disingenuous. I mean that one, the one that I read earlier, which is this one that came back up. This one, I don't see it in that way. I see it in the in the way that I was just explaining it. Yeah, they're they're both saying the same thing, bro. No, but of course one is kind of going like if, and then one is the one that you showed is kind of directly showing commit and committing it. So in that case, if I'm, my question is to myself is uh, why would this hadith say something like this? Yet he's he said like that's a sin. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it it yeah, the hadith says it because your religion is false, bro. That's why it says it. No, it's trying to we 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 it, we're, we're it, trying uh, to show you that we're trying to show you that Islam is false. Is also one of the hadiths. Also, the it means um, if you don't believe in a hadith, you don't have to like believe in it. As long as it's like it's not going astray, putting you away from God, like, you don't have to believe in a hadith. It doesn't mean that let's say if it's ten thousand hadiths, you have to believe in ten thousand hadiths. Only if, if like your life comes in that position, then maybe you consider the hadith. But outside of that, like for me personally, I don't, I don't want to commit it. Whether whatever this hadith is, I'm not gonna listen to it. Now if I don't have to sit down and be like, no, no, just this hadith said it. Now I have to do it, or I have to find somebody to blame for. Yeah, but why are you? Why were you trying to justify? Because you have to know whether adultery is a sin or not. Like if you if you trap a bird in a cage, of course you a, a wild bird is gonna so find adultery, escape. So adultery, so adultery isn't a sin. Is a sin. You said first you gotta know so if bro, let me adultery ask. is a sin or not. Yeah, first you have to understand that. But I know is a sin. So if I know the sin, and then somebody comes with such um, such a hadith, I'm personally gonna say I don't believe in it. Bro, and you were just trying to you were wrong? just trying no. to justify it. You were just justifying it. Let's read it again. Verily Allah has of fixed how the I look into it. Hold on one second, Madi. Very Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in and which he of necessity must commit. The adultery of the eye is the lustful. I mean, you know, blah 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 blah. You get it. So you were mm -hmm. just trying to justify it, and you were said, "Oh well, I, I believe this means this. I believe this means that." But uh, now, now that it gets a little bit more tricky, and it's it goes completely against what you thought it meant. Now, all of a sudden, well, I don't, I don't believe in the hadith anymore. Um, because again, I think the better option. Against, against let me just me let me just give you a better not. option. Uh, let me give you a better option. I think the better option, if 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 you're forced to do that, I think the better option would be to leave the religion, uh, in general. Are are the hadith? 
the hadith. Like you don't have to do a three sixty turn on somebody. But like, then why were you like, okay, why were you trying to justify it then? Why were you trying to justify it? Just just a moment ago you didn't believe that it it wasn't corrupted or uh, fabricated or you didn't believe it. You literally like you you were you were trying to justify the hadith. Now all of a sudden what? Uh, I'm gonna the just throw I'm gonna just throw it out now. A little bit different than this one. So you do have a problem with this, though, right? You do have a problem with this hadith with saying this particular hadith. Yes. If it's it is saying in this way, then I don't. I, I'm not gonna take it in. I'm just gonna be like, I don't believe in this hadith. All right. Cool. So, so okay. So so the so reason why Ibar, Ibarra, one second. Hadith. Hold on, Ibar, one second. So the reason why you don't have, uh, the reason why you do have an issue with this, is because you are not okay with Allah. Uh, 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 having something to do with the amount of adultery a man commits. If people have free will to, to, to sin and go against God, why is God playing in that as well, though? He's like, let me let me add on to that, too, as well, too. Let me let me go ahead no, and throw no, no, Let me I'm go ahead and throw a little way. bit of let me go ahead and throw in a little bit of adultery in there, too. Let me add on to how many people is going to sin against me. Do you not see how how no, how I'm inconsistent this is? This doesn't make any sense. But here's the problem. You have a problem with this for a specific reason, because you don't want to admit that you're OK with your God having a hand in how many times uh, 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 somebody is committing adultery. And this is exactly what this Hadith states, bro. And, you know, you have a problem, no, with it, which is the reason why you're trying to find out if it's fabricated or not. When you don't. When, let's say if I have a problem with the hadith, doesn't mean I don't like the hadith. The problem is not gonna be all oh, because God was in, is involved in it. I'm just gonna be like the translation or whatever whatsoever is wrong with it. Because on one side, if you're gonna say this is a sin, and on the other side, somebody's gonna show a hadith which can be touched, because again, hadith is one of those stuff that the prophet said and it's word of mouth and stuff. Which one am I going to go with the Quran saying that it's a sin or versus the Hadith like this showing that it's not a sin or is God is like um, making you do it or in, 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 like in, indulging you to do it. Then I would be like, no, this Hadith is a wrong Hadith. Hey, beep, beep, vroom, under the bus. Sahih Muslim under the bus. Can't never get nowhere with these people, man. Vroom. He just mowed down Sahih Muslim. Out of Come a thousand, on, you probably get maybe one or two honest ones, man. It, it, as soon as it get tough, look at what happens, man. Ah, oh, it's fabricated. Hey, look life. Look at the rest of the 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 uh, ad. The adultery of the eyes is the lustful look. <laughs> so, Allah made you look at that that pretty girl passing you by. You know what I'm saying? The uh, the adultery of the ears is listening to a voluptuous song. What do you guys believe in if you don't mind asking? Allah is making them fall victim to all of this. What do you guys believe in? Come on, Marty. We, we believe that people are straight, sinful in nature, that God don't, we don't need help from God to commit adultery. We got free will. We're going to do that anyway if we want to do it. No, I'm saying in terms of like the religion, what do you guys believe in? You see the cross by my name, right? I don't know what that means. Well, Christian, who else died on the, who else unalived on the cross, Marty? <laughs> who unalived on the cross, Marty? Who was what? Who unalived on the cross? Jesus. Exactly. So if we you see a cross by who my can, name, who, who can make me alive him there? What? Who can unalive him? That's a different story. Deal with this hadith. Yeah, we're not gonna do no. We're not gonna do no running. We're not gonna do no running on this panel, bro. Deal with it. Deal with your religion. Stop worried about if Jesus is God, bro. You got bigger issues to to figure out right now. You need but to figure out. Again, if, you need to figure out if your God. You need to figure about. out if your God is helping people commit adultery, man. This figure is that out, guess, hadith. Like hadith is is something that if it goes against. My, like, my thoughts. You got adultery. Not- you got adultery in your Quran too, bro. Four twenty-four. All married women. All married women 
are forbidden except those who your right hand possess. That's adultery right there. So you running away from the Hadith and jump into the Quran, that's another problem. 424 allows you to commit adultery, bro. So you you still got the problem. If it goes against what you believe in, that means you shouldn't be in this religion. And we got someone that unalive on the cross that will set you free from adultery, that will set you free from all of your manly, fleshly desires. That's Jesus Christ. Come to Jesus, bro. That's all you got to do. And then you won't have to defend ignorant stuff like this. You won't have to defend. I do believe in Jesus. You don't believe in, you believe in Isa, not Jesus. It's the same thing, though. No. It's not. No. It is, because technically, don't, don't, the, don't all, call the whole Jesus. story yeah. of don't my, Isa, don't, the don't whole call my story Lord of Jesus, Jesus. Body. it's the same person. It's, him. it's, it's him. like the way... Right now, you just pulled up two different hadiths by talking, saying it's the same person, the same way I think about Jesus and Esau being the same. But you'll be wrong. How How is that wrong when the whole history of Jesus and the whole history of Esau matches with each other? The what? only factor is no, probably no. when... What? Christian... Hold on, we could, we could dissect that. We can that. dissect that right now. Madi. There's Madi. a lot of hit, there's they, a lot hold on, of hold on, hold on, Madi, 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 exactly, Madi. We gotta, we but, gotta, we got, we can dissect that right now. Since you, since you no longer have anything to say about this hadith, uh, we can go ahead and just disregard that, bro. Let's actually address what you just said. I think that's a good thing to uh, tackle because uh, maybe you sincerely believe what you said is true, and uh, we can just show you that that's false right now. Did Jesus say he will be crucified? Sorry, say, say that question again. Did Jesus say he will be crucified? No, I would say. In the Bible, is there a verse where Jesus claims he will be crucified? In the Bible? I don't know because I haven't read the whole Bible. Okay, well, in the Bible, Jesus claims that he will be crucified. In your Quran... It says he wasn't crucified. Oh, so you're, okay, you're just talking about if he was crucified or not. You're saying you said you said Jesus and Isa align. You said they're basically the same person, and you also, uh, you know, uh, uh brought up history. But, but whether if he was crucified or not, you're saying that in the Bible it says that he said himself he will be crucified. No, listen, listen to what I'm saying. I, I, it's, it's, I feel like I feel like it's hard for you guys to even to even uh, like like stay on the, the 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 topics that you guys bring up yourselves. You said that Isa and Jesus historically are the same person, correct? Yes. All right. So Isa in your Quran, that's who you believe Jesus is. Jesus in our Bible is who we believe Jesus is. Jesus in our Bible is historically way earlier than yours. You guys come 600 years later and then you have a Jesus in your book. So we have to historically co compare the two and we see that these are two different people that we're talking about. You made a claim and you said Isa and Jesus is the same. Are you just speaking that or do you actually know what you're talking about? Because you said you don't know what Jesus said in the Bible. I mean, it's hard to believe that you've never heard somebody push back on the fact that Jesus was crucified. We personally, as Muslim, I mean, there's different parts of Muslims too that they believe different stuff. But we personally believe that Jesus was not crucified. That's not that's not the that's not even the argument, bro. You said you said uh, I don't I don't even think he understands. Like these, they, 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 I don't even think I don't I I really don't understand how Muslims they like. You guys don't even understand the stuff that you guys that comes out of your own mouth. 
Can I read them that Jesus said out of his own mouth that he will be unalive? Yeah, read that for me. Let's see what he say. It's in the Quran, Mighty. 1933. This is G Jesus speaking. He says, peace be upon me. The day I was born, the day I die, and the day I will be raised back to life. 1933, Mighty. I think he's Googling the verse. Prophet Google. Yeah, your moms have been lying to you, Marty. Pistol Pete, I see you in the guest request. Are you a Muslim? Uh, just type in the chat if you're a Muslim or not. Nah, he's Christian, bro. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Jada, you, you you need to come up, Jada Jaguar. You be doing a lot of yapping in the chat. And don't be making no sense. Come on up. Women don't be are welcome no too. Sense. And y'all, and y'all, my bad. I'm 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 still new to TikTok, man. I appreciate all the gifts that's been coming through. I uh Sometimes it's still new to me. I'll be like, what is what is going on on the screen? Appreciate the, appreciate the lightning bolt. Yeah. Come put us in our place, Jada. Come put us in our place. If we don't make sense. Please come put us in our place. Shake and bake. Appreciate them, them lightning bolts, bro. Yeah, Jada was trying to come up yesterday, so, you know, I, I mean, she might be busy, but um, she is in the comment section going crazy a little bit. No, but we don't believe that women are half brain in, in, in Christianity. You have a freedom to speak. What's up, Marty? Did you check that verse out? Oh, you went back to Prophet Google. If you off the app and you're reading, we can't hear you, bro. You gotta stay on the app. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, what's yeah, up, we man? We can hear you as long as you're on the app. We can't hear you if you go off the app, bro. See, I, I can't pull it up on the screen. I don't know how you guys do that. I mean, you can pull it. I mean, you can read it after we get off of here, or. Matter of fact, I'll put it up for you. Hey, Bobby, you got to mute up, too. You got some background, background noise. noise though, bro. You can hear everything going on in your living room, man. You got to mute up. You want me to put it on the screen for you, Marty, so you can see it? Yeah, go ahead. Because we want you to have true salvation, bro. We don't want you running around, you know, saying false stuff about Jesus that you really, you know, probably should be educated on. But here we go. So 1933, do you see it? The Arabic is up here as well. Do you speak Arabic? Hold on, my bad. Let me turn it on. Do you speak Arabic or no? No, I don't. Okay, well, we English cool too. It says, Peace be upon me the day I was born, the day I die, and the day I will be raised back to life. And make sure this is Jesus, that is Jesus, son of Mary, and this is a word of truth about which they dispute. So even the Quran is saying that people dispute about this, but this is the word of truth. That Jesus, the son of Mary, said this. Peace be upon me the day I was born, the day I die, and the day I will be raised back to life. Clearly it means like the day I was born, the day I would die, and the day that I would get resurrected. Uh, be, yes, exactly. So that means the day that he will be resurrected is 
they're coming back. The when, he already, when you when you unalive, he he had to already been rose again to come back. So now the argument is whether did he already turn alive from the cross, or is he still to be coming back to life? What what do what do history say, bro? The history says every 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 even even atheist scholars believe that Jesus was a real person and he was crucified under Pontius Pilate by the Roman government and his followers believe that he rose from the dead but it's a given fact that he was crucified the Quran and a few other Gnostic texts is the only ones that come late 600 years and say you know what no Jesus didn't die but even the but even in the Quran, they made a mistake and let this verse be in there. Like people wasn't gonna read it. If you're off the app, we can't hear you, brother. So they when they say that he has died and he is coming back, like this can also mean like he is dead right now, but he is coming back. Do you, do you know the Quran said that he's not unalive? What did Allah do so then, to Jesus? So then who, he raised who them, was he raised for them up seven to, days? He raised for them up to days, himself, whatever, how right? Many days was it? He was he was unalive for three days and rose again. So okay, so for that three days that he was unalive, uh and then he went back. So what happened here then? He went back where? So, like, clearly he's not here right now. Allah, in your Quran, I'm using your Quran as reference. Even in your Quran, it says Allah raised him up to him. Okay, so he is coming back. Even in your Quran, on the day of judgment, it says that Jesus will come back to judge. Not on the day of judgment, but before the day of judgment. Well, he'll be here by the day of judgment. Yes, yeah. So not like on the day, but before that. Mm -hmm. So I mean, do you guys get this information from the Quran or is it from Bible? It's from the Bible. The Bible talks about this six hundred years even before your Quran. Now the Imams and the Sheikhs, they lie to the Muslims. And tell them that no, Jesus in fact didn't die. But it's even in their own books. They're they're banking on people not to do their homework and go and study and try to find the truth out. They're banking on sheep just gonna blindly follow. No, but the thing, you see, the question is that when somebody says, Hey, did he die? Yes, he did, but he is coming back. That's also saying that, oh, no, so that means he never died. No. We're going into, like, particular... Did you hear him say the day, the day I will be raised back up? Yeah. So, for to be raised up, you have to be unalive in a grave to be raised back up. But then if you are alive, like, then where are you? So you must have, have died and then you're coming back. Now the argument is like, did he die or did he not die? And, and he unalive. Yes, he, 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 he unalive on the cross. I don't know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at it as they're both kind of right. I mean, the reason that, that he, that the reason this is the, this is the problem about the Quran. They don't know why the reason why he was unalive. He came, for that, for he that unalive. Short time, or are you talking about why he's going to be unalive later? He was unalive in 33 AD. 600 some years before the Quran, he was unalive. But okay. three days later, he rose back up. 
called the resurrection. Do you know why he 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 got unalived on the cross? No, explain your reason. He, first, he came to redeem humanity from our sins. Because from the time of Abraham, no man can walk this life perfectly to be uh, sinless. And because, you know, back then for them to be forgiven of their sins, they had to make a sacrifice of usually a lamb or a ram or something like that to cleanse their sins. Talking about the Israelite people. But Jesus, I mean, God sent prophet after prophet who failed and couldn't walk this life sinless. So Jesus came down, being already in the form of God, took on flesh and walked a sinless, perfect life so he can be the sacrifice for all of humanity. Only a God can redeem every person that accepts him from humanity. So you don't have to die in your sins. So Jesus came to be that sacrifice. And he took your sins to the grave with him. And he rose back up. And all you have to do, buddy, are you hearing me? Yeah, go ahead. I just have to mute myself because at the law, I've got three kids around me. Okay, no, no problem. So all you have to do is believe that he unalived, rose back up three days with the power of death in his hands, and you confess it with your mouth, you can be saved from your sins and not be judged on your works and not have this question mark hanging over you about whether I'm going to go to heaven or hell. Because Muslims don't have a guarantee that they're going into heaven. There's no guarantee because they will get judged by their works. And you can't work to be in the presence of God. God doesn't need anything that you can offer him. It's a free gift that Jesus gave to the whole humanity. And all you have to do is accept it. Basically, it's like you're walking around with a billion dollar check in your pocket and you never took it to the bank to get it cashed. It's a free gift. Marty. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you, but once you off the off the app, you can't hear me. I can't hear you. Yeah, so I was just saying, um, I mean, do you guys believe in the whole sacrifice thing? Like in terms of someone else has to sacrifice for your sin. Even before Jesus, I'm talking about sacrificing an animal to get to wash away your sins. That's, like, that's the law. That's, that's, that's the, the covenant law. and the law that was established with Abraham and the rest of the prophets. This is what God himself told us, that he told them that they had to do. It's like, you know, it's a little bit of a, I'm looking at it in a, in a different point of view. Like I am a Muslim. I do judge my own book in all ways to, to make it more sense to me. But at the same time, of course, you have to look at other religions too, because you only got one life and you don't want to mess it up by making just a, an assumption decision by just because your parents told you and then all of a sudden you you messed up and now you have to serve time or internal eternal time if it's like you know so in that case that's why I, I do a judgment on every religion and based on going which you're saying right now or in the christianity itself i just can't get my head around people saying that jesus is the son of god because I have a son right now. Oh, let's son. let's 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 just focus on what he did on the cross for now, and then we can go into whether he's the son of God or not. Okay. So what, what he did on the cross is not what he did; it's what happened to him, to me personally. No, no, no. He because him being in a form of of God, and we'll get to that later. He laid down his life willingly. 
He even says, I can command a, a legion, a thousand legion of angels to come and set me free right now. But he did it. He loved you so much. He loved us so much that he will die for us. Just like you. If you, I don't know if you got kids or not, but you would die before you see anything harmful coming to your kids. I got four kids, and I would lay down my life for them. Because yeah, I, I love them that much. You understand what I'm saying, Marty? No, no, I, I understand, like, the love that you have, right. like, unconditional so, so, love and stuff. Right, so Jesus loved us so much, he sacrificed himself for, for us. So we can be back in the presence of God when we leave here. But we got to accept his sacrifice. We have to accept it. We can't, if you, do you believe in Allah? So do you believe Allah is like self-sufficient? He doesn't need anything from humans. He doesn't need, need us, right? Yeah. So why would you think that you can do good things to get back into Allah's good graces to where he'd be like, okay, you did enough. Come on. He doesn't need that. No, he and doesn't need as our worship. Not just your worship, just your good deeds. If you forget prayer, then you have to go yeah, feed, the, feed the homeless. The or if you sin, then you got to um, make an atonement by doing something to please Allah. It's like you weighing your sins against your good deeds. But your good deeds doesn't matter to God. He doesn't need anything from you. You can't pay a ransom for his love. You can't do anything to get back into heaven. All you have to do is accept his free gift that Jesus did on the cross and believe it in your heart that you are free from your sins because of that free gift. So let's say Jesus died on a cross for the sake of mankind's sin and, and then all the sins washed away for those people before him or after him? For eternity. The ones before and after. For the ones that accepted the him. What if, what if you're like, okay, all right, I'm not going to accept Jesus now. I'll just accept Jesus when I'm like 80 years old. Or once you find out you've only got like six months to live, then all of a sudden you accept Jesus to wash away all your sins. Right. So the thing about that is you never know when your last day is going to be on this earth. So you don't want it to get to that drastic point to where you you never had a, a chance to accept him. You should do it while you're free and, and in your right mind and in your good health. So you won't have to worry about, oh, um, am I going to unalive next week? So I just wait till next week. Who says that you're going to make it to next week? No, in that case, of course, if you're a healthy person, but let's say like right now I know a friend of mine who has cancer and they give him three months to live. But right. Person, as long as you got, as long as you got a breath in your body, it's never too late. As long as you got breath in your body, it's never too late. So for those people, then they're the lucky ones. Yeah, that's lucky enough to see, oh, death around the corner that I need to get right. And now I can actually repent and accept Jesus' uh, gift. But everybody don't get that opportunity. Some people die in their sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, and they never have the opportunity to accept his sacrifice. So they're, you know, out of luck. No, I, but you I, don't want to be I one of those people. Like uh, the whole situation of like you know, repenting to God. Of course, God will accept all your sins until the last day, or until you find when you're gonna die. The minute you find you're gonna die on this day or whatever, then it's too late. That's how I kind of look at it. Well, so you don't want it to get. You don't want it. This is what I'm saying, Marty. You don't want it to get to that point. That's you what I'm saying. That's you, the whole exact point is that to not let it happen. And that I think both religion accept that. That you you always want to turn towards God or Allah as long as you don't know when you're gonna die. But the minute you find out, it's like too late. No, but Allah, even if you 
it's 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 too late because he's gonna judge you on your good deeds or your bad deeds. You're gonna be standing before. No. As, as long as you repent... Hear me out. Okay, Hear me out. Just do that. Give me 10 seconds. Go ahead. You're going to be standing in front of a perfect, sinless God that's worthy of, you know, your praise and everything as a sinful spirit. How do you think he's going to judge you? He's probably judging me good. No, you're sinful. He can't. He can't oh, live around sin. Sinful me. Uh, yeah, of course, he's gonna judge you based on your. So sin. he's gonna judge you harshly. But just like if you go to, you know, the court, mm -hmm. and you got a, a traffic ticket or something. This is the analogy that you can use. If you got a traffic ticket, you don't have the money to pay, and the judge is up there, and he's like, either you pay or you go to jail. But in this scenario, the, ju the judge is God. Now, if somebody come up to the courthouse and pay that fine for you, you're free to go. You can leave. He'll accept some else's payment, even if it wasn't yours. Now, it'll be on you to pay him back. But the judge will accept it. This is what Jesus is doing. He's stepping in. Because that's for fair. Because that's fair. Right. He's stepping in for us, and he's saying... I, would I took on the punishment on the cross, my child that accepted my payment, he can go free. He can get into heaven. Now, the way you pay him back, all you have to do it is accept him. Nothing else. Confess with your mouth. Just believe. You don't have to do no good works. You don't have to go to, you know. Jesus. Say that again. I said, I do believe in Jesus. Yeah, but you got to believe what he, you don't believe he died on the cross, unalived on the cross. You have to believe that he unalived no, on your cross. I know, I know Jesus, they got cruc he got crucified, then he came back to life, and after three days, he was raised. You know that? So I know, and I, so I know So why are you that. a Muslim? So why are you a Muslim? Because that's what a Muslim believes are too. Muslims don't believe that. No, they see there are different types of Muslim. As a matter of fact, it actually says, I don't know if it's exactly Hadith or the Quran. I don't want to say, oh, like I know off my head, but the setup is going to be 72 different type of Muslims. So what, what type of Muslim are you? I'm Sunni. Right. So Sunnis, they don't believe that Jesus is unalived on the cross. They don't believe in atonement, the way he can pay... Your sins that he paid no, your sins that, that on the cross. I find that unfair. It's like you have everybody answers for themselves. I feel like you nobody can come and take away your sins unless God forgives it. Now people right, can right, vouch right. for but you. The thing is, they can vouch the for you, such as Jesus or Muhammad or whatever, but they cannot just forgive your sin. Again, See, the, the thing is exactly. end of the day on the God's hands. Right, you can't, God is just not going to, because our God is a just God. He, he's going to have to punish you for your sins. And the wages of sin is death. You, you, you're mixing the religion. You're, mix, you're mixing Christianity with Islam. But you can't, that's not how it works. That's not how it works in Islam. Somebody... I don't know if somebody told you this or something to try to get you to convert. I don't know how long you've been there, but that's not how it works in Islam. You got to do good deeds in all Allah. No, might. In my, in in my thing, you have to believe in all religions. And if you believe in all religions, before you can become a Muslim, you have to believe in all the other religions or understand. No, that's that's false. Religions. That's false, Mighty. You know why? Because... All religions make truth claims. All of them make a truth claim. And all the truth claims, they contradict themselves. So all of them can't be true. One of them got to be true. The rest got to be false. That's so not in what, Jesus I, say, what I, I think. Jesus says funny. in the Bible, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father except through me. The only way you can get to heaven is through Jesus. Not through Muhammad, not through Allah, it's through Jesus. Because he the one 
that actually sacrificed himself for you because he showed you how much he loved you. None of the rest of them did that. This is why you must leave it, believe in Jesus and Jesus alone. You can't go around, you know, I wouldn't say you can't because you can. It wouldn't be wise for you to run around believing in every religion that is true because it's not. Muhammad says, I'm the way through Allah. It's only, I know how to get to God. Allah spoke to me. The Buddhists, they think it's a way you can get to heaven. The Christians, we have our own way. Christianity is the only religion that's not works-based. You can't work your way into heaven. So then one question, then why do Muslims and uh, Christians believe that Jesus or Isa is coming back. Because Islam plagiarized the Jesus of the Bible and perverted him into something that he's not. If you ask Islam or a Muslim, they would say Jesus is not the son of God. He didn't unalive on the cross. He, he's coming back to crush the cross. He's, but he's coming back to judge, but it's not a, a judgment of, of a supreme judgment like a sovereign judge would do. Yeah, he's just you doing got, it because Allah told him to come do it. Right. You you have a you have a high level of distortion um within within the Quran as it compares to the Bible and who Jesus is and what he did and uh what was his purpose. So um you know, in the Bible, we have a clear understanding of his return. In the Quran, you don't. You have to go to outside sources to get a better understanding of what in the world they're even talking about in the first place. Second of all, he wasn't even supposed to be crucified. So what was the point of take, taking him away, sitting him up in, 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 in wherever he is right now for, uh, uh, um, you know, as, as long as, you know, who knows, and then sends him back down to come take care of business? I mean, the narrative just in Islam just doesn't even make sense. But a lot of the times Muslims will just submit because it may be the religion that they were born into. But if you really think about it, if you really read the Bible, you'll see. We have the true story. We have the story that actually makes more sense instead of a religion coming to den deny things, but also adding things that we have in our book. And when you deny stuff, mix stuff up and add stuff. Well, you're going to eventually have problems when you come and dissect those things. So that's the reason why you guys believe that Jesus is coming back, simply because what he said, it's a plagiarized uh, 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 copying of what we have in the previous scriptures, while at the same time denying the previous scriptures. I mean, it's, it's just as simple as that. It's tough, but it's true. So the, what's the reason Jesus coming back if he already said Christianity is the only way and I die for all your sin and he went on and left what is the reason of him coming back since clearly he explained that Christianity is the only way you want to answer that life or should I go you could take it I just wanted to jump in on uh on that on that note, but I'm listening to y'all. Go ahead and uh, have y'all y'all back and forth. I'm also taking care of some stuff on my side too. Well, he he's he's coming back. What happened? I'm not thinking he got disconnected. Did I disconnect him or exp de expand no, no, I, him? I don't know. I don't know. If I, don't know if, I think he got disconnected. I think. Yeah, I got dropped for some reason. I don't. Know. Oh yeah, I don't know what I I tried to yeah, I tried to de expand it. Yeah, go ahead, but go ahead. Yeah, y'all good. I'm listening to y'all. Well, he's he's coming back to uh, basically to to set the world free from all the sin, and but didn't he do that when he left? No, but he's coming back for a final time, and he's coming back, and he's gonna make heaven on earth to well. There's no sin in the earth. So he's going to crush the to unite. He's going he's to he's going to defeat the devil. He's going to crush the antichrist, and he's going to bring the heaven to earth. 
and the Antichrist, who do you think is going to be your followers of the, of the Antichrist? Anyone that's against Christ. Right now, and I'm not saying this to be rude or nothing, you will be centered, well, you will be considered like an Antichrist. You have an Antichrist spirit in you because you don't believe that he what he did on the cross for you. And that's not the side of the that's not the side of the fence you want to be on. I'm not saying you're the antichrist, so don't get me wrong, brother. Or I'm can it be the or can it be the other people uh from uh the what are they called from Jewish because they never accepted Jesus in the first place. I mean, they have an antichrist spirit in them too, but we're talking about an exact figure. Because Somebody that's going to be highly esteemed and trick the masses. Jewish, between Jewish and Christianity and then Muslim and Christianity, we kind of sit on one side and know that Jesus is coming back and Jesus did come while the Jewish believe that the Jesus never came and he is to be coming, which we believe is the Antichrist that is coming. Right. I mean, so... so regards to what other people believe and disbelieve you're always going to have that i mean even during his time he had disbelievers right even in his face he was showing them who he was and he had disbelievers they hated him for it so um regardless of what jews say and what muslims say and what christians say the 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 point is is the truth um uh, what's your name is the antichrist one person or is it like a group uh, the Antichrist, um, I believe it's it's one like one like specific person. We we call that person the Dajjal. You guys have you guys heard of that? Yeah, I I, I I know what you guys mean. Yeah, I know what you guys have in your religion. Yeah, the Dajjal. So I mean, don't you see the resemblance right there? Like, yeah, yeah. I, this, this but talking about this, talking about this, but and that's kind of yeah. But Madi, that's that's part of the deception. It's Hey, look at look at our look at our similarities, but let's ignore our differences. That's dangerous. The, the you know what I mean? That's let me let me just give you an example, right? It's dangerous because if I were to say, you know, hey, hey, you know, uh, me 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 and you, man, we 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 both take care of our kids, bro. You know what I mean? We're good fathers. But then at the but at, but then at the end of the day, I'm like out here you know, drug dealing, stealing, and doing all this other stuff. It, does that mean that me and you should 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 be friends and we should, you know, align with each other? You're going to be like, no, I don't want to be out there, uh, be, you know, be aligned with somebody who could potentially have a police come kicking his door down and then I can be guilty by association because I'm riding with this dude and he got uh, a, a bunch of stolen stuff in his car. So this is the same with comparing the two and then just looking at you would just apart yourself from that person. You wouldn't hate on that person. Right, right, exactly. So we the minute exactly so exactly so we so although we have uh, similarities, we separate from you guys because of the dire differences. The differences are just too are, are just too insane. For one, you're denying who Jesus is. For two, you're denying what he did. And three, there's just moral issues with the religion as a whole um, uh, based on what Muhammad said. So, yes, like what you said, I would just you would just remove yourself from from being around that person. Exactly. That's the point. Why would you do that? That's, that's because although you guys Wait, have. Hold on one second. Why, why would ahead. you do that? You see what you, you just said it. You would remove yourself from hanging out with that person. The reason why you would do that is because now you understand I'm going to disregard our similarities and then I'm going to I'm going to hone in on our differences Are our differences. What's going to allow us to be friends or not? And you just admitted it. No, the differences are too are too great for us to be friends. So I'm going to have to remove myself from this situation that's exactly how it's supposed to be bro and so this is what's but happening with the quran you, you can't try to get somebody to follow the quran and uh, uh that follows the bible simply because of the similarities so 
So, so you know, just just be hey, careful. Buddy. Just be careful when doing that. Be careful when trying to. Me? Yeah, I'm here. I don't have to. Oh yeah, there yeah, you yeah. go. Oh yeah, I saw you. you had, yeah, it went the off the screen. But yeah, go ahead. Hate the sin. This is like so many uh, Muslims. They say y'all hate Muslims. We don't hate Muslims. No, we just, I, 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 we, I, we, we, we're just talking about a point uh, right now, and I just want to make another right, point. Right, 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 right. So you don't you don't hate the person because Christians we are taught to love everyone, but we do hate the sin, the sinful things that people do. No, what I'm saying is look look at this way. Look at this scenario. I'm, I want to explain. Let's say uh, we're all humans. To me, I think we're all humans. If I say right now I got two eyes, one nose, two hands, one mouth, a head, legs, the only difference I see is, okay, male versus female, which they're trying to mix that up nowadays and make it really complicated for people to understand who are we. But I think the only differences in this world we have right now is male versus female. And I think they are two different species. Um, uh, but outside of that, if we, in our human nature, if I say, if somebody says to me, Hey, listen, you and such that person, let's say I'm Middle Eastern and the other person is, uh, from whatever you want to call it from Caucasian, or you want to call it from Africa, but whatever the, regardless of the race they're in, the person tells me, Hey, you guys are the same us and our human like in our blood, we like to say, no, I'm different. I'm better, or I'm this, or I'm that. We always like to make differences. But if we come in together and say, hey, listen, you got two eyes, I got two eyes, you got one nose, I have one nose, we're, we're so much similar with each other. The only difference is right here. But, you know, if we come with love to, uh, towards each other with our similarities, the differences we'll come to a conclusion eventually we will find out who is better but the minute we start off with the differences it's like already the negative energy is building there i understand what you're saying and uh but the thing we're talking about here is salvation our souls what we will spend eternity we're not just talking about just human differences I we're talking about yeah, I personally feel like this, like, okay, all religions, they have their similarities, one next to another. At some point, one aparted themselves, the other aparted themselves at some other point, and the other one aparted themselves at some other point. And of course, I don't know how many more is to come. Even in Christianity alone, we have different types of Christians. Even within, let's say, Orthodox, then we have different types. Even same thing goes with the Muslims. We always like to make ourselves into different, different, different branches. But end of the day, we all run to the same root. And that is to the same God. And the first thing you have to do is whether if you believe in God or not. The only person that I know is an atheist that they disbelieve in God in general. The only evil person that I know. And they're the people in the middle. The only people that I see as a negative people is the people who are actually satanic believers. And I think right, right, right now right. for us is the time right. to kind of come all of us together. And the way I look at all the religions, I see all the similarities. And I, you know what I mean? There's a different vision I have. Right, right, right. The, we, the, I, I'm not going to lie and say we don't have similarities. But we, have vast, we have vast differences, Marty. Hold on. And the differences will distinguish us from each other. And it will cause one of us to go to heaven and it will cause some of us not to go to heaven. This is the issue. It's the, the differences will separate you from God between the religion. So you want to make sure you're following. So you want to make sure you're following the right religion. You understand what, what I'm saying? What is the religion in general is just whether you believe in God or not. The one God, not multiple God like Zeus or the Hinduism, the other no, ones. Look, what if it's that? I'm just asking no, it's, you, like what? Right, 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 right. It's because sure if you believe... Can. You're Muslim, I mean, I'm Muslim, you're Christian, and we both sit down in heaven. Right, but the thing is... Happens, who are we to judge God and say, oh, no, but you told me this, <laughs> I sacrificed this, or I will say I was praying five times a day, and I was right, doing right, this right, so-and-so. Right. 
The difference is, Marty. The difference I is. I hope Marty. that happens because that will actually make more of us it, go to heaven. It will. It will. It will. I. I mean, we. I feel you on the let's sing kumbaya and hold hands and do all that, but that's never gonna happen because one faith believes that it's in its exclusivity. It's an exclusive thing to be a Christian and to actually follow Christ because he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. No one gets to heaven except through me. So Jesus Christ himself is excluding all of these other religions because he makes a truth claim about life and what you need to do to get to heaven, and that's to go through him. So us as Christians, we would never, you know, come, you know, be like, hey, y'all got the truth, we got the truth. No, because we believe what Christ said. And they that, believe that what Muhammad of, said. That is a lot of, like, we're leaning so much towards our books and to believing that, oh, my book is right or your book is right. You said you, said you, never, you, said you never read the Bible, right? I'm not like uh, parts of it. Let's say verse by verse here and there a couple times, you know, just. Do you mind if I read some verses to you? Sure, go ahead. Okay, this is Isaiah 53, and it's called the suffering servant. So I'm going to read this to you. This is a little bit lengthy, but stick with me, okay? Okay. It says, <clears throat> who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He has no stately form or majesty that we would look at him, nor an appearance that we would take pleasure in him. He was despised and abandoned by men, a man of great pain and familiar with sickness, and like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised, and we had no regard for him. However, it was our sickness that he himself bore, and our pain that he carried. Yet we ourselves assumed that he had been afflicted, struck down by God, and humiliated. But he was pierced for our offenses. He was crushed for, crushed for our wrongdoings. The punishment for our well-being was laid upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the wrongdoing of us all to fall on him. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that is silent before his shears, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation who considered that he was cut off from the land of the living, for the wrongdoing of my people to whom the blow was due, and his grave was assigned with wicked men, and yet he was with a rich man in his death, because he had no violence, he has done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth. But the Lord desired, desired to crush him, causing him grief, if he renders himself as a guilt offering. He will see his offspring, he will prolong his days, and the good pleasure of the Lord will prosper, prosper in his hand. As a result of the anguish of his soul, he will see it and be satisfied. By his knowledge, the righteous one, my servant, will justify the many, for he will bear their wrongdoings. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he will divide the plunder with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was counted with wrongdoers. Yet he himself bore the sin of many and interceded for the wrongdoers. If you had a guess, who do you think this verse is talking about? Jesus. Exactly. Jesus. Do you know that this verse <clears throat> was written and prophesied 700 years, six to 700 years before Jesus was even came to earth? This is a prophecy about who will come and take the sins away. 
our book, all the prophecies in our book come true. This is how God revealed himself. This is how we know we're, we're following the run, one true God because everything that's in our book that was prophesied comes down to it and it actually happens. It actually, he fulfilled all of these. All of them. And he did this for you and me. He took on our sins and, and our burdens so we don't have to. Like we can actually go to heaven because he took that upon himself. You see, like every of like the prophets, any like to me, Jesus, I think of as a prophet, that they die. Of course, they are like, you know, something was revealed to them to bring the human mankind to believe in God. And if they were killed upon doing that, they were willing to do that. Like, you know, like, like you said, the children's, like your kids, my kids, we're talking about the same, the love. Mm -hmm. So, of course, but he did which, that for the love right. of the human but beings which, which that he one had. Of them, right. But which one of them prophets was able to redeem all of humanity with what he did? None of them. He was the only one that can do it. But you see, it's like if it has all, it's all connected. That's how I look at it as that. It's all connected. You have to believe in Jesus. You have to believe in all the prophets. What are you guys thinking of, like Abraham and all that? What are they? Are they? So, so, like, so did any? So did any of those prophets that was under life, just like you said? No. Did any of them? Did any of them? Did, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me finish, Marty. Let me finish. <laughs> Did any one of those prophets actually resurrect and come back from the dead? No. Exactly. It was Jesus. And it was only and it only could be Jesus. Yes. And but how is that connection is made by the Christian saying that he is the son of God? Wait, really quick. Can okay, I can I wait, show you? Wait, can oh, I so Real quick, can okay, I dissect? Okay. No, 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 can no. I? I'm talking about logical sense now. We're not talking about the Bible. Wait, but hold on, real quick. Let me let me try to dissect something that you just said earlier, just really quick. It was like literally two minutes ago. You said yes. you you believe yes. in all the prophets. Yes. Okay. Uh, who who are they? Who are who are who are all the prophets? Well, technically, well, in the book, in the Quran, it says it's 125,000. Prophets, I don't know every one of them by name, but uh, some of the good ones, special ones, especially the ones that a book has been revealed to them, Prophet Muhammad, Jesus, Moses, Abraham, um, uh, Jacob, are you, are you, we call it Joseph. Right, but where, where are you deriving the names of these prophets from? The Quran. Right, so... You say you believe in all of the prophets, but you're only believing in the prophets that are named in the Quran. No, I believe in all the other prophets, but if they're not mentioned and nothing has been historically written down, I don't like to de depend on history too much also, because history is, is a man-made book. But where and would you... it could be problems. Right, so, uh, so, 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 here, so here's the problem that I'm getting from that statement. Um, if you're getting your understanding of of, of who's a prophet from the Quran. That means that you're making the Quran the sole decider of who a prophet is, while at the same time saying that your religion tells you that there's 120 something thousand prophets. So there are there are prophets that are mentioned in the Bible that are not mentioned in the Quran. And are you gonna denounce them as prophets? I mean you say you believe in all the prophets, but I mean, we have more prophets named. I personally think we, if they mention in the we, Bible, more not in the Quran, named, it would be we, more true. But hold on, we, we have more prophets named in the Bible than you do in your Quran. So how does believing in all the prophets work? Is it just believing in all the prophets that it says in my Quran or? No, no, all the prophets. Even so, if it says on the Bible, 
So where do you I get them? Yeah, I know. You said all the profits. So where do you where do you get them from? Where 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 are you getting those profits from? Where do you where do you find them? Well, from my understanding, the more that I, the, the knowledgeable, I mean, the most that I know about is the Quran as of now. So all the prophets that I know comes from the Quran, but whatever, once I read Bible, once I read the other books too, Injil too, and Torah and all of them, and if they're mentioning the prophets too, I have no choice to believe in them too, because if I'm going to follow one, I have to follow all. Is it That's just, whole and is it just virus. those two books? No, there's four holy books. No, I have to read no all I'm the saying, is it, is it just those two books? Is it just, is it just the, is it just the Bible and the Quran? No, the four holy books. What are the four holy books? We have Injil, Zabur, Ta Torah, and Quran. Okay, and that's it? It's just four books? That's the four, four holy books that I know. No, but, I, but, but, I'm, but I'm asking you, is it, I mean, you said there's 120-something thousand prophets. And yeah. So I'm, so I'm asking you, when you when you start to read these other books, are those the other books? Are those, like, Is that it? Is it just the Bible and the Quran? No, when I read all four books and all the four books, whatever prophets have mentioned, I have to believe in them. Yeah, but does it just stop at those four books? Are there more books? I'm going to stop at those four books. No, you, you're going to stop at those four books, but is, is, is that it? Are there more books or is it just those? I, it's just those, to my understanding. All right. And where are you getting this understanding from? By... Through my own, well, of course, the way I was raised. Exactly. That's the point. So that's you're the starting, stuff that you're I was starting, told. And, and, hold on, but that's the point. You're starting, you're starting backwards. You need to work from the beginning. Okay. You don't, you don't, you don't start a book in chapter uh, uh, four or, or season four, right? No, no, no. I, and then, I, I, and then, I agree and then start, with that. And then start to watch season that. one. You'll be confused. Things will only make sense. I, I agree. You if have you start to read from the, the beginning. So I understand that you were you were born this you know into this religion and you started with the Quran. But I'm trying to point out that you are doing yourself a disservice by 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 having a preconceived notion that what is in your Quran is the standard of how you should understand who prophets are, what books should be accepted. Because if you would have started with the Bible, you would have realized that your book is not implemented in, in, in this line. You see what I'm saying? What, you're saying four books and you added in... One second. You're saying four books and you added in the Quran. But if you would have started with the Bible, you'd realize the Quran, is, it, 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 it can't even be in, that, in, the, in the conversation. You know what I mean? So I think when you read the Bible, read the Bible so, as if read. Hold on. Just read the Bible as if you read, you're reading it as if you're not a Muslim. Read it as if you're reading it for the first time. Don't try to try to remove any preconceived notions about the Quran and about your religion because and, and uh, immediately you will start to see differences and you will start to be is uh, see issues, especially when you get to the New Testament. So you just need to be careful with that understanding and idea that you have about how to come at uh, these uh, these books that, that that was backwards. You got to do it the right way, man. If you're going to do it, you got to do it the right way. No, I agree with you on this, that if you're going to read the books, start from the first Start from the first chapter, make your way to the last. And this is the four holy books that I'm trying to start from the beginning, go to the end. And that is the correct way to do it. Um, but when you go from, like I automatically was raised to believe in all four. I'm going to read all four regardless what mentality I have. I'm not going to just see, like, maybe some other person was raised to not believe in the Quran. But if you read the book the same way as I am, because my first question was, does God exist? Like, I denied my own book. I denied my own book. I denied the existence of God, period. And I had to start all the way from scratch. 
And this is why when I came to an understanding of no, God exists, and this is through scientific facts, like scientific stuff that I know, as long, like as much as I try to learn about science, I come to conclusion that there is God because some such thing cannot be so perfectly created without somebody like doing it. So after I believed in God, then I came into realization, okay, then which one am I going to do? I only have one life. So if I have one life, what if I'm wrong? What if I follow this and I'm wrong? What if I follow that and I'm wrong? And I don't want to burn in hell. So I need to get and make my knowledge as strong or as much as possible to, in order to understand the whole picture. And I see, and what, you're, what, and I see what you're saying because... And I, and, I, and I see what you're saying because when I first, when I first realized um, what the Quran was and you know what was in the Quran and what the have Quran, you read the Quran fully? What the Quran? No, I haven't read. It. I haven't read it fully, but I read. It, I read a lot of it. Um, no, when you I see, first, like that's the thing. That also, like you have to like give a chance and read all of it, just like as I'm saying. No, I've I'm already. Agreeing. I've already. I mean, I've, I've already given it a chance. And, and, and just like what I said with you, when you read the Bible, uh, you'll immediately start to see differences in issues. So once I saw issues that couldn't be reconciled, there's, there, there's no reason for me to read the rest of the book. It's not going to do anything for me. Now I'm, 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 I'm sure that the Quran is false. And I'm telling you, I came at the Quran sincere when I first uh, realized what the Quran was. I absolutely came to the Quran in a sincere way because I didn't know anything about it. So now one question. You know that there is a lot of scientific facts in the Quran, which no way science could have known back then. They're only finding them now. That is one thing that you cannot get your head around. Like, how do you explain this, that somebody that didn't know how to read and write can come up with such information, and then years later, Gets discovered that it is true. No, 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 no. Uh, your Quran says that if it wasn't from God, there will be uh, inconsistent. You know, uh, uh, if if it wasn't from God, there will be much inconsistencies or something like that, or any you know, contradiction. Yeah, contradictions, inconsistencies, and stuff like that. Right. So basically, saying if there's an error in here, this book is not from God. Period. You got to throw it away. Um, we've proved that some of the scientific claims that are in the Quran are absolutely false. They've been debunked. But what, what happens is, is now Muslims will go and do uh, 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 gymnastics around it to actually make it fit when the Quran clearly says something otherwise. So you got to be careful with going with that narrative um, with, the so with, 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 with the scientific there's facts because, because, because they've, they've been debunked and then the Muslims will just turn around and say, well, the Quran isn't a science book. It's for our guidance. It's always a rabbit trail that you got to follow them around. Uh, we've already, we've already, we've already dealt with scientific claims. So there isn't none. So you're saying all of them has been false. They're false. Yeah, they're 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 false. Every they're, single one of them. They're, they're false, and they also they're false, and some of them come from false tales uh, from the past where these things have already been deemed false, but for some reason, Muhammad picked it up and, and, and put it in the Quran, and now billions, now I billions have, of Muslims I have believe like, it's true. Like, most of my knowledge, like, uh, not on top of my head, because, of course, that's when you're finding questions on your head, you kind of want to seek for the answers for that time, and then you're not going to just write them down and stuff, and I'm so busy with my own life that I just, you know, when I sit down, when I have some free time, I just like to clarify my mind, you know, having this whatever questions I have in my mind by just researching them. And this is one of the reasons why I am on this life right now is not to like come here and start telling you guys, hey, the Quran says this and this is the word of God. And then you guys are telling me the opposite because I, I look at it as two books. We're just going at each other. Let's look at the similarities. Mm -hmm. As I was explaining the, the world before, that it will be much more peaceful when you talk about similarities because now you accept the other person as being at peace and then you come in, okay, then let's talk about the differences now in peace. Mm. Rather than, you know, just coming at each other with the differences because in human nature and our blood, we are meant to do that and we've been doing it for thousands of years.
The minute we come, you say this person is the same as you. Nope, that person, my skin color is better than that person. And that's how it starts off. And next thing you know, all this. Look at the history itself. I don't even like hey. to depend on history too much. Because hey, Marty. Is, again, it's a man-made book. Hey, Marty. Mm -hmm. Do you... Um... Do you want to know why Christians outright reject the Quran and Muhammad? Go ahead. How did Muhammad get his revelation? With dreams. So he didn't meet Angel Jabril in a cave? Uh, yeah, that one too. Right, right, right. So if you look at in our Bible, in Galatians 1 8, it tells us how to spot false teachers. You hear me? How did Jesus got the revelation? See, let me read you the verse. It says, I am amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who you who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel which is not just another account, but there are some who are disturbing you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. And it says, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you, he is to be accursed. So even at, this was 600 years before Muhammad. It tells us that even if someone comes and preach to you, even if it was an angel, someone says they claim to meet an angel and they gave them revelation that they are to be accursed. Our Bible is fail proof. It let us know what the truth is. It let us know. And Muhammad talked to an angel in a cave with no witnesses. Nobody witnessed this. And you expect me to believe him, someone that comes 600 years after the gospel was already preached and tells us things about our Bible that he had no previous information to. He didn't meet none of these guys. He didn't live in the same area. He didn't talk to anybody that knew these guys. And you want us to believe that he had the truth about Jesus. I would our Bible for one just about all of this, bro. Did you hear me, Marty? Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, it tells us. If someone comes to us preaching a different gospel to what we know that Jesus sacrificed on the cross, rose again, rose again, took away our sins, that if this didn't happen, then they are to be accursed. We're not to follow them. They got the wrong gospel. They got the wrong truth. How many gospels is there? Four. There's gospel account. The gospel means the good news. There's one event that happened, but it's documented by four different people. Matthew, they all Mark, in the same way, word by word, or they, 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 they all, they all, yeah, they all says the same message, but with different words. That's just like if me, you, and my brother Life here is standing on a street corner and we see a wreck happen, right? And then the police come and say, tell, ask us, y'all write down a report about what y'all seen. We're all going to give the same account, the same event, but we're going to give different details to that account. So like, like John, Mark, my, my report... Right. My report is not going to be word for word exact like your report. And yours is not going to be exact word for word like life's report. Were they all 
they all knew each other, like this John, Matthew, and Luke, and them. Yes, they was all just well, not Luke. Luke wasn't a disciple. John, Matthew, was there at the crucifixion. They seen it happen. One was just a little bit farther off. One was closer to Jesus. Which was John, I think, was the closest one. Right. And then the other uh, Gospels. Luke, Luke was just a disciple, well, someone that uh, was under Paul. He learned from Paul. But Paul met Jesus after he was resurrected on the road to Damascus. <clears throat> and Jesus revealed, <clears throat> excuse me, revealed himself to Paul. And taught him the message. And showed himself to be the true living one that actually was dead and rose back up again. Now you see, like, as you guys are talking more, of course, I'm getting more information than by, I'm just using logical sense. I'm not trying to, like, go work. No, nah, no, nah, man, you've been, you've been one of the better sports that we've had today. I have yeah, no problem. Like I'm not trying to disagree with and stuff. I'm, like, literally thinking, like, if I, my questions gets answered and it is true, then, of course, you look at it, you're like, okay, then I, I will, I will accept, you know, for what is being said at, at this moment. So the, as long as it's like, okay, if John and them, if let's say John, Luke, Matthew were all written in a different times, not at the same time, all the Bibles, then you would look at it, okay, then things could have changed. Because word right. of mouth, we know it's going to change. Right. So if that's just like me, let's like, because yeah, yeah, you yeah, follow that's Quran, that's just like me coming. 600 years after the Quran and saying, you know what? Muhammad wasn't a prophet. I'm writing a book, though, but I got this revelation from God. Muhammad wasn't a prophet. Um, you know, Allah doesn't exist. I got this revelation. Blase, blase. You Which would take a fool to Which that, people right? people still do. Would you, would you, but would you believe them over your Quran? No, of course not. Because right now, right. Like, right. Right, what that's I mean, that's the same, way, that's the same they, reason. Claiming them, claiming that. That's the same right. reason you don't follow Joseph Smith. I hope you don't follow Joseph Smith. No, who is that? Do you believe? Okay, you don't even know who he is. Um, okay, well, I mean, you know, it is what it is, man. Like, I, I, you're, uh, you're seeking, which is which, which is great. Um, the one thing that I would ask you to do, and this is just me being completely honest from what I understand your book is, um, just when you're searching, uh, uh, do not place the Quran as your standard of, 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 of where truth is. If you do that, I mean, you'll just you'll just start doing gymnastics. Now, you, I'm not saying you can't pull the Quran and kind of compare the two, but if you place the Quran as a standard and you find things that go against your Quran... Um, and then you denounce that, you know, you denounce the earlier sources um, uh, simply because it disagrees with your Quran. You're going to you're going you're gonna to do yourself a disservice. Uh, no, you see, the, 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 some of the disagreements that I have know right off the bat between the Bible and the, the Quran, whatever the Bible is talking about or good stuff, let's say if somebody should not steal. I have no debate against that. I'm not going to say, well, what are the Quran says in this words? I'm not trying to come here and then compare word by word. Yeah, you Something shouldn't, you shouldn't focus on the, you shouldn't Bible, focus on the, believe in it. yeah, but you, you shouldn't focus on the similarities. Like I, I, I hear you in that. Um, and you know, I'm going to just be honest, forget the similarities. No, when it's something is good, I'm not going to argue against it. Right, but that's what that's what I'm telling. You. I'm just being honest with you, man. Like, but the, for, my biggest question is, but my Marty, Marty question. let me just tell you this. Trust me, trust me. Forget the similarities. Just trust me when I tell you this. The similarities don't matter when we're talking about religion, because the one true religion is going to be the one true religion. It's not half true religion. It's the one true religion, and that one true religion is going to be found within either or book, the Bible or the Quran. So, you know, I respect the fact that you, um, you know, you can see similarities. Of course, we, we, we both can see similarities. I'm not saying that the Quran is all evil and it doesn't have any good moral things in it. I agree. 
but forget the similarities. Those are what's going to ruin your understanding. Go for the differences, hash the differences out and see for yourself that the Bible is actually telling the truth and the Quran is just a creation afterwards. I don't know what was going on. Maybe this guy wanted to be a prophet um, and, and this stuff was created out the blue, out, out the thin air. I have no idea why the Quran is even here in the first place. But people create all different type of things. People say all different type of things. And you have to hash it out to, to, to uh, you know, figure out if it's true. So, you know, forget the differences. I mean, forget the similarities, man. Go for the differences and you'll see the truth. Hopefully, God willing. One question for you guys, because um, you guys would understand this much better and probably can explain the whole understanding behind saying that God, I mean, Jesus is the son of God. How do you guys like connect that with God? I know some say, well, he is God. He came in the, in the, in the human flesh to reveal himself in the human flesh and stuff. But let me, I want to hear like a clear explanation because I, I believe in one God. Okay. Yeah, the word, you can go ahead and address this, and then after this, I'm going to close up, because I know you got something to do, too, so I'm going to go ahead and shut the room down. Hey, let me, let me, let me, I just want to, do you believe, it's not going to be long either, do you, Amadi, do you believe the Quran is the speech of Allah, like his divine revelation? Yes. Okay, do you remember the story about uh, Iblis not prostrating to Adam? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let me let me read you this something. This is saying uh Okay. It says then God asked him what his name was to be, and he said Adam, because he had been created um out of Adama, the dust of the earth. Again, God asked him his own name. He says, Adonai, Lord, because thou art Lord over all creatures. The very God gave him, given to himself, the name by which the angels call him, the name that will remain immutable evermore. But without a gift of the Holy Spirit, Adam could not have found names uh, for all. He was a very truthful prophet. So it goes down and says, the extraordinary qualities with which Adam was blessed, physical and spiritual as well, arose the envy of the angels. They attempted to consume him with fire, and he would have perished had not God uh, protecting hand rested upon him. In particular, Satan was jealous of the first man, and his evil thoughts finally led to his fall. After Adam had been endowed with a soul, God invited all the angels to come and pay him reverence and homage. Satan, the greatest of the angels in heaven, the 12 wings instead of six, like all the others, refused to pay heed to the uh, behest of God, saying, Thou didst create us angels from the splendor of the she uh, Shekinah, and now thou dost command us to cast ourselves down before the creature which thou didst fashion out of the dust of the ground. And basically, he's telling them he won't prostrate to him. Right? So now, you, did you read this from Bible? No. This is from the legend of the Jews. These are old Jewish tales that they used to tell their kids at bedtime, way before the Quran even came it's, out. It did said they're like all uh, Iblis being the the greatest of the angels. Like Iblis, I don't. It's not an angel. Right. But this is a plagiarized story that you find in your Quran. It's plagiarized. And this came out way before the Quran even came out. So your Allah is putting plagiarized stories, like bedtime stories, into your Quran. It has no substance. So in the Bible, is, there's not such thing mentioned? There's no such thing as being plagiarized. Our stories no, no, no. are all authentic. I'm saying like the, the Iblis story or the Satan story. No, in our in our Bible, Satan got cast out of heaven. Well, if you keep, if I would have kept reading, you would see he got cast out of out of paradise. But what is Satan? Is he, is he an angel or is he not? 
And I will, and yeah, and I will believe he's an angel. And your beliefs, he's a jinn. So, you, so you're saying that you guys are saying that he's made out of light, not this, this story. This story we know is, is is a false story. We know this because this is not how Adam, you know, and Satan got kicked out of out of heaven. This is not what happened. But your Quran took it and took this as as sacred text. But this this came out way before the Quran even came out. This is what the, it's called the legend of the Jews. If you ever want to read a book called it's called the legend of the Jews, it have like 40 percent of your Quran in it. The sleepers, the sleepers of Ephesus that went to go sleep in a cave. That's in this in this Quran. I mean, that's in this book. Your your book was plagiarized from other texts. It's not the divine speech of Allah. It's plagiarism. No, I have to. I have just, to really re read this book that you mentioned and take a look at it to exactly understand it. But uh, my question earlier was that: How do you think like Jesus is the Son of God? Me personally, again, it's my question. And I wanted to get an answer for it to clarify my own thoughts and understanding. Okay. Now this this is this is just not like a ten minute discussion. No, let's make, it, let's make it short. I know they say, okay, he's the son of God because he came in uh, in the human uh, flesh. Like this, Jesus came in human flesh. He is God. He came in human flesh. Correct. Mm hmm. So then, do you, have, do you have a Bible? No, no, I don't. Okay, I'll read a couple of verses to you, bro. Because no, no, life, no, life, he wanna, he wanna, he wanna close up. I'm, I'm no, gonna read a couple of verses says, to you. What it says on the Bible, I know he claims to be God, but I'm saying to you, our understanding is there one God or there's two God? There's one God. There's one God. The Bible there's says one that there's one God. So there's one God. So then if Jesus is the son of God, this is again, I'm, we're not talking about it from Islamic point of view. This is from a logical point of view. I'm talking the same way that I've been talking to you guys all this time. So from a logical point of view, if the son, like when you guys are saying that he's the son of God, it automatically makes it to be two gods, in my understanding. Can I, can I answer this like? Uh, yeah, go go, yeah, go ahead, and then I'm about to. I'm gonna shut. I'm gonna shut it down in like in like right, two right, minutes. Right. Just just give and me like I'm a quick to, little two yeah. minute, and then yeah, you you, you should have led I'm with a, this, I'm man. Use I think logic because he don't he don't want the Bible, so I'm gonna just use logic rhythm real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay, mighty, mighty. You say you have a a child, right? Yeah. If you, is your child, do you share the same nature as your child, a human nature? Yes. Right. So if Jesus is the son of God, he shares the same nature as God. But what, that would make two of us, like me and my son, now there's two of us. No, no, no. He shared the, but it's not like you. And your son, because you and your son, y'all occupy space and time and matter. Outside of that, we know God is a, is outside of time, space, and matter. So they can exist differently from what you exist in, because they're not constrained by the principles of this world. They all have the same nature. So if God begets a if son, he saying they all have the nature, same nature. You say he they would have all. the same nature. Multiple. No, he would have the same nature as God. But they share it, divine nature together. And they exist in one. Madi, do you know do you know what Christians say the Trinity is? By Trinity, that's one of the biggest questions I have is I just can't get my head around it every time they try to explain. It's just, I just can't understand it. 
but do you know do you know what they say it is? Yeah, they say Jesus is the Son of God and the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Okay. Like it's all you, one. you gotta Okay, you 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 kinda you kinda you got you gotta learn how to you gotta learn how to uh, re reiterate it if you got questions about it. You gotta even understand how to say it before you do that as well. So the Trinity is the nature of God, which is made up of three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So that's that's how you all three is one. Yes. Yes. And those that's how three, God exists. And those three are one. So it's not three gods. It's that one God and his nature is made up of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So wait, and I'm trying to see like if it's all one. Hey, just uh that, do me a favor, because I'm literally about to pass out. Um Catch us on another live. Follow me or follow yeah, the word. Sure, I don't know. Maybe, sure. yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe if the word or maybe if the word wants to go live or something, or you can DM DM either of us or whatever. Um, we'll get yeah, somebody to, to get on another live too because it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. We we'll, we we can we can get somebody uh, or or if word wants to do it because I know I don't I don't deep dive into the Trinity, um, but we can get somebody to go back and forth with you um, and and maybe try to hash out some of your misunderstandings. Or you can join uh, the words lives when he has them. I know he can do it as well with you. But I okay. really got to go. I'm about to close this out, man. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, I followed you back, too. I followed you, buddy. Follow me whenever yeah, you I'm see me on the live. You can always come up. If you press the request, I'll push you up to the front so we can discuss it. Yeah, for sure, man. All right, guys. Nice talking to you guys. All right, yeah, man. You Peace. God sport, bless man. you.